Celeste is a pixelated, tough-as-nails 2D platformer. Which, granted, we've had a lot of in the past couple of years. And with that in mind, if you've seen some gameplay here or there and decided to pass on it because you think you've got it figured out, I hear you, but give me a shot at making you reconsider. If you're a subscriber, you'll remember that in our review for Splasher a few months back, I mentioned my rocky relationship with these kinds of games. About how extremely challenging obstacles are one thing, but an entire level of them back to back without checkpoints is where I start to throw in the towel and resign to the game's difficulty. There's none of that here. Celeste simply doesn't give you the time to feel bad about an almost perfect run that's gone bad, because each room is its own compartmentalized puzzle to solve. If you die, you're back instantly. It's as if the game is begging you to give it just one more shot. Or 100 in some cases. And rather than kicking you while you're down, Celeste encourages you to embrace failure. Between chapters, notes of encouragement will cheer you on, telling you that each death is something to be proud of because it means you're learning. And that's just a small but important example of how this game presents itself. It wants you to succeed, and that's really refreshing. You're not going to find yourself throwing your hands up and quitting very often because the challenges ahead, while difficult, aren't time consuming in the least. Assuming you don't die, no room should take more than 10 to 20 seconds to get through, at least until the very end. But if you've gotten that far, it's safe to say that you're already well equipped for the challenge. Now, after hearing all this, you may be surprised to hear that Celeste actually didn't click with me at first. Granted, I wasn't in the ideal gaming environment, an 11 hour flight home from Japan. Trying to get accustomed to these controls, going from one stressful screen to the next, all while crammed into a tiny Delta Airlines seat for that long? As you can imagine, uh, the physical discomfort and fatigue didn't help my impression of the game. So I ended up getting off that plane convinced that, in spite of all the positive buzz I had heard about Celeste, this game just might not be for me. But imagine my surprise the moment that I booted up this game and tried playing it again with a pro controller on a big ass TV and everything changed. Suddenly I got it. Sticking to and climbing walls, air dashing, tricky jumps and bouncing platforms, all of these things that I had previously dreaded were suddenly a playground for me to conquer, and it felt really good. And it wasn't just because I had been playing the game on my TV. I think that the time that I had invested on the plane had unwittingly improved my comfort with the game and its controls to a point where I was now having a really great time whether I was playing it in bed or at my desk, the bathroom, you name it. What was once a miserable and punishing experience that I wasn't good enough to overcome had suddenly turned into a thrilling and rewarding game that I couldn't put down. This is what Celeste is about. Literally. I mean, this is a game about a girl who decides to climb a mountain in spite of everybody, including a part of herself telling her that she can't. And as you fail a sequence again and again and again and again, but eventually come out the other end a better player, it's easy to relate to the journey of the main character. Speaking of characters, you'll encounter a couple of them on your climb, and each are as charming and memorable as the last. You'll meet an old woman who has lived on the mountain for years and knows more about its secrets than she's letting on. A fellow climber named Theo who is very kind to you and loves to take selfies, but later you'll find that he's also here to deal with some of his personal issues. 
Oshiro, the emotionally vulnerable ghost of an abandoned and wonderfully spooky hotel who will do anything to get you to stay. And finally, yourself. Well, the dark side of yourself anyhow. You see, once you reach the foot of the mountain, you'll pack it in for the night and end up playing through a dream version of the level ahead, in which the mountain forces you to confront the darkness within you. It doesn't go well. <laughs> She is by far the most interesting character of the group. She's mean and cynical, and perhaps most importantly, she doesn't believe in you. And we all have that inside of us, that little voice inside our heads that might make us feel anxious, insecure, or not good enough in some capacity. I won't spoil anything about how these issues get resolved, but I will say that the way the game handles the subject matter is intelligent, realistic, and thoughtful. And did I mention the music in this game? Well, it's wonderful. And it's on Spotify right now, so go check it out and thank me later. In spite of being notorious for its difficulty, Celeste also includes a variety of options to make the game more accessible to players who just want to play without all that punishment. It's a smart and completely optional inclusion, which opens up the game to a much broader audience who may just be interested in experiencing the characters, visuals, and music, which as we've covered are all worthwhile. So that's pretty much all I have to say about Celeste. Aside from it crashing twice at the level select screen, in which I didn't lose any progress, I don't really have anything negative to add. Celeste is one of those games that I always hope to get invested in but rarely do. A game that really sinks its hooks into me, to the point where I can't stop throwing myself against whatever crazy challenge it lays down. And for someone like me, who never really enjoyed super hard 2D platformers, to say something like that is one hell of an endorsement. I'll remember my journey up the mountain and the characters I met along the way for years to come, and I hope that you give it a shot as well. I'm giving Celeste a 5 out of 5.